Hey, first grade, today we are going to continue our study of numbers to 40, and we're actually going to look at some number patterns today. So the first thing I want to do is bring in a number pattern with some missing numbers, and I'm going to show you how to solve for those missing numbers. There are only three steps to solve for those missing numbers. So the first thing you want to do is to find some numbers in your pattern that are grouped together. These numbers can help you solve for the missing numbers. So I see already that 22 and 24 are grouped together, and I see that 30 and 32 are right next to each other or grouped together. Those are patterns that are going to help me solve for the rest of the pattern. Now I'm actually just going to focus on 22 and 24 since it's at the beginning of my pattern. My next step is I need to find out based on those numbers, whether I'm adding or subtracting. So I know that if I go from 22 to 24, that my numbers are getting greater. So I know the word greater means that I'm going to be adding in this number pattern. My next step and my last step is to determine how many am I adding or subtracting. So in this number pattern, I see that going from 22 to 24 is not just counting by ones. I'm not just adding one to each, each number. Instead, I can see that I am adding two. I'm counting by twos in this pattern. So I'm going to add two to each number, and that'll help me solve for those missing numbers. So let's go back. So we go up to 22, 24. If I add two more to the number 24, I get 26. Two more is 28. And then 30 was already plugged in, 32 was plugged in, but two more than 32 is 34. So that's how I solve for missing numbers in a number pattern. Let's do a few more examples. So on this screen, you will see that at the top of the page, I have a number line. Now this is a stacked number line. So you see it goes up to 10 on the first line. And then in order to keep counting, I have to go down here to number 11 and count on. And again, down to 21 and all the way to 40. So it's kind of stacked on top of each other. So I take a look at number one and I want to go through my steps here. So the first thing I want to do is find those numbers that are grouped together. I see that 25, 26, 27, 28, four numbers there to help me all group together. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that on my number line. Second step is I need to figure out whether the number line is growing and getting greater and adding or if it's getting smaller or less and subtracting. And I see that 25, 26, 27, 28 is growing. It's a adding pattern. My next step, how many is it adding? Well, I see up in the number line here that it's just adding one. So I'm just going to be adding one in this pattern. Okay, so my pattern is plus one. That's going to help me solve for my missing numbers. So if I leave off on 28, plus one is 29, plus one is 30, and then I'm going to come down here to the next row here and 31 they already gave me in the number pattern, but the next number would be 32. So I have solved the missing numbers by adding 1 to each number. Let's try another one. So at number 2, I see actually two really good grouped together numbers. I see here 21, 23, 25, but I also see at the end there are three numbers grouped together, 35, 37, 39. I'm going to focus on the first part of the pattern. I see that 21, 23, 25 is a growing pattern. It's getting bigger, and I'm going to go ahead and put that on the number line up here. So I see that my numbers are getting greater. And I also see it's not just by one this time. This time I see that it's growing by two. They're getting greater by two. So I know that this is a plus two pattern. That helps me solve for the next number because I'm going to leave off on 25 and then I'm going to count two up and that is 27. Two more, 29, which they gave us already, and then two more and this is where I have to count one and then go back to the next row. Two, 31 is next in the pattern and then two more, 33. 
All right, and then the pattern below continues 35, 37, 39. This is a plus two pattern. All right, let's try one more. In this pattern, I'm going to do something a little bit different because I want to solve um, the end of the pattern first. When you're solving for patterns, you don't always have to start with the first blank you see. So I see at the end of my pattern that that's where my three numbers are grouped together. I have 15, 10, and 5, and I'm going to put those on the number line. Now what I noticed is that this number pattern is getting smaller. It starts at 15 and then it goes back in the numbers to 10, back to 5. So I know this is a little bit different than the first two we did. This one is a subtracting pattern. The numbers are getting smaller. So my first thing to determine is that it's a subtraction pattern, but second I need to find out how many, and I see these numbers are pretty spaced apart, so I'm going to go ahead and count starting from 15. One, two, three, four, five. So that was a count back five. One, two, three, four, five. So I can see here that I am counting back. And this is going to be a subtraction, subtracting five pattern. Okay. So now go back down to number three, and we're actually going to solve for that last number because I left off on five, and it's easy for me just to keep counting back here. So I'm going to count back again. One, two, three, four, and there is a number that comes right before the number one off the number line here. And that is a zero. So my missing number there is zero. All right, now I'm going to go to my next little cluster down here. I'm going to solve this number first. And I'm going to go to this next little cluster of numbers, 30 and 25. And I'm going to go, go ahead and put those on the number line. Now, there's two ways to solve this. The first way is to go ahead and do what we were already doing, count back five. So we started at 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to 25. And then we're going to subtract five again, 1, 2, 3, 4 our answer would be 20. But I find that there's an easier way when you have number lines that are, when you have number patterns that are counting back. So I want to show you an easier, easier way. I like to start down at the end of the number pattern. And I like to go the opposite way on the number line because I think counting forward is actually easier than counting backward. And I can see here that if I start counting this, I have zero, 5, 10, 15, I hear a pattern that I'm very familiar with, and that's counting by fives. So I know that 5, 10, 15, that next would be a 20. Okay, and I'm actually going to keep going backwards on this, on this number pattern because I want to solve for that last, um, the last one over on the end there. So I'm going to keep counting from 20, 25, 30, 35. All right, so you can go either way you want on the number line. I think counting forward is easier, so sometimes I like to go backwards on my patterns, but I just need to figure out which direction the pattern is going and make sure I'm consistent with that, okay? All right, so this is the page you're doing today, and I gave you a little clue. I already clustered your numbers together. So these are the numbers that, the numbers that are highlighted are the numbers that you're gonna use to help solve the pattern. So remember, first thing you do, is you find the two numbers and you figure out are you adding or subtracting so on the first one i see i go from 18 to 19 that's a plus pattern so i know i'm adding and i also know that it's just simply adding by ones because from 18 to 19 there's only one number so 18 19 i can fill in my 20 and keep going so on each pattern just break it down into those three steps First step is already done for you. Second step, are you adding or subtracting? And then the third step is how many are you adding or subtracting? Now, if you get a little confused on this page, you can always go to the next page where I have included that same number line. And you can kind of go back and forth between the slides and figure out um, what your missing numbers are based on using the number line, or you can just count back or count forward in your mind. It's up to you either method you use. So good luck on this first grade. You're going to do great.